And it's another Yoruba historical conversation we're having here today. You can be sure that we're going to have a nice time. We're going to be talking a lot about the Yoruba nation. And I'm particularly excited that the people here would... I, I did a little bit of history, not too much though. So it's, it's an opportunity for me to learn about the Yoruba girl I am. We're talking about Yoruba nation today. The professor emeritus is going to enlighten us. And of course, he's not just going to enlighten us, open the floor for us to make imputes. And of course, the resource we have here seated today will contribute to the body of knowledge that we're, going, we're putting together. Actually, this series we've been having, I'm sure that for those of us that have been consistent in attending this meeting, my boss once said that we're going to put a compendium together and it becomes a, we, have our, we have our library there that people can come in to read about us and of course you know that this would inform the kind of decisions the kind of planning we'll be making for ourselves it's a pleasure to have you all here again today um, it's good to have you here um, Professor Anthony Ijaola Ashiwaju Thank you so much. He's the speaker for today. Please come, come and sit down here, sir. Ekabo, sir. I hope you had a good night rest. Good. Um, accompanying him are um, Ambassador. Is it right to say Professor Ambassador? Which one do I? Which one do I say? Okay, Olabi Yayi is an ambassador for Bene Republic. Welcome, sir. It's a pleasure to have you here, sir. And um, Ambaf Ambassador, I don't know whether to also call him Professor, because, <laughs> yes, Mufutao Laleye, thank you so much, sir. Ekabo, sir. So we get into business for the day. Before I proceed, before I hand over the um, mic to our speaker, our guest speaker, I would like to call Tayo, who is going to do... Okay, Mr. Chair. Once again, I want to welcome you to Dawn Commission. This is Development Agenda for Western Nigeria. Dawn, here on the 10th floor, Cocoa House. I, for those of us who are here for the first time, this is the commission set up by the six southwest states to midwife integration process. When you talk of integration, we talk of total development of the western part of Nigeria. That's what we do here. It is the only organization in this country that I know of, that when we wake up in the morning and we go to work, all we think about is the progress and development of Western Nigeria. The six states of Western Nigeria, because I don't want to assume that we all know, includes Lagos. Because I've had questions in the past, she Lagos Yes, it includes Lagos. Lagos is a Yoruba state and we are not apologizing for that. So, welcome. As I said, this is a non-political organization. The only politics we talk about here is politics of development. Partisan politics, we don't play. And for an obvious reason, the moment you bring partisanship into a place like this, you struggle to have the buy-in of all the states. So the reason we have believability and the reason we've been able to partner with organizations it's because they know that we are a non-political organization. So I said this is done, 10th floor Cocoa House. As I normally say, there is no other building that could have housed such an organization but Cocoa House. This, uh, two months ago, we had the Deputy High Commissioner for UK in this building. And she told me that, I mean, she read L um, history at LSE, the lady. And she said, this building symbolized the power of 
the Yoruba people of Western Nigeria in those days. And she, that's not a lie. I mean, I still tell people that you struggle to find a better quality building today. This building is 52, 52 years old, standing. It speaks to the vision of the likes of our Lord Akitola of those days. And we thank them. And the reason we are doing this, again, is to try to connect our past to our present in order for us to have a future. Um, it's, there's no point in belaboring the fact that as a region and as a people, we are struggling at the moment. Um, we, we were living on past glories for so long, but it has now dawned on us that even in Nigeria, we are struggling. We used to be at the commanding heights of the banking sector, the media, even our education, now we are struggling. Never used to be like that. But one of the things we do here, and this is what we are doing today, is to connect our past to our future through our history. Um, it's several pages have been written in the newspaper about why history was taken out of our curriculum and it's coming back. Well, we felt there's no point in us throwing up our arms and saying, oh, well, let's do something about it. So we started this last year. This is the seventh edition. We've brought in notable speakers like um, Professor Adiloe, who's here, Mama Bolanle Awe, Professor Banja Kitoe, Isaac Harbert, um, Professor Shitoku, and, and many more. Shio Yeweso. They've come here to talk to us about several aspects of our history and how relevant our history is to our travails of today. I normally say that one of the reasons we are struggling as a people today is because we neglected our past. We felt that um, we now know it all. And you, it's not uncommon to sit and say, oh, the Yorubas are leaders here. We are, leader, we are no longer leaders. It's a lot of our youth, the younger ones, the, the I want money now generation. They, these are kids that, who are not armed with anything. As I normally say, we have friends who went over to the East last year and they came back telling us that we're in trouble here. Because you go to the East, you find 15, 16 year old boys who will tell you every component of a car. They're using their hands to make shoes, clothes. But our own kids in the western part of Nigeria, they're no longer there. All they do is watch football on Saturdays and during the week go to Naira Bet and bet for the next game. That's what we are good at. We're no longer there. So, someone said, when we want to eat now, we look towards the north. And when we want to clothe ourselves or wear shoes, we look towards the east. So, where are we? So, this is our own little contribution. To try to recon that. Let us tell ourselves that we were once proud people. We were once proud people. And it is not a lost cause. We can always reconnect that past. Look at the best practices in the past and see how we can use it in the today in order to recreate or to create a better future. That is why we're here. We've been here as a commission for the past four years. Um, thankfully, our governors have bought fully into this. It is their project, even though as I tell a few people that they didn't start it. They didn't start the idea of regional integration. It was an outside thing that was sold to the governors and by 2012 they felt this was the ideal way to go. Let's have a commission to drive it and give back to Dawn in 2013. But as much as possible we've cobbled relationships together making sure that our states at the drop of a hat we bring them here on every sector, health, education, and Greek. They all come here, talk together and fashion ways of working as a team. Western region worked, but today we have states, so we are, not going to go, we are not going back to Western region. But those states can work together for the progress of the region, for the progress of our people. That is what we are about. That is what we are doing. And part of it is learning our history, understanding our history. And I'm sure our guest speaker again today will tell us who we are and who we are and where we ought to be as a people. On behalf of my 
colleagues at Don Commission, I want to welcome you to 10th floor, Coco House, Ibado, once tallest building in West Africa. But we are still standing tall, and we will continue to stand tall, despite the vicissitudes and the the whatever battering we are receiving in the Federation. We must put our heads above the parapet and say that yes, we are in the doldrums, but it is not a lost cause. We can continue to do the right thing and bring our heads up again. Oil that we all rely on is not going to last forever. We used to say that uh, maybe oil was a cause and it should dry up. Maybe we'll think, but we don't need oil to dry up any longer. You know why? They're not going to buy the oil very soon. So many countries are now going electric. The age of the combustion engine is fast disappearing. So in 10 years' time, so many countries will be driving electric cars. Uh, oil will be like pure water if you are not careful. So we will then have to fashion a way to survive and grow like countries, advanced countries who don't have oil, but they are regarded as first world countries. Thankfully, in southwest Nigeria, Western Nigeria, we have the human resources. Let us find a way of harnessing it together and making sure that we are not found wanting or we are not groping in the dark. Welcome to Don Commission as I hand over to my colleague Tayo Adeleke to come and give us a brief citation of Baba. Thank you very much. This is not a citation, I must say. Uh, what we try to do is just try to as much as possible informally, try to balance the formal and the informal in describing our guest speakers. Because if I call this a citation, with the number of professors that attend this gathering, I'm sure some people will start querying my uh, academic background. Um, Professor Emeritus Anthony Ijala Ashiwaju, member of the Federal Republic, is a historian, and what, what some describe as a teacher's teacher. Baba was born on April 27, 1939, in Imeko, Ogun State, Nigeria, to Peter Egbedele and Maria Osu Ajini Ashiwaju. Papa graduated with a bachelor's with honors degree in history from the University of Ibadan, Nigeria, in 1966, and a doctor of philosophy from the same University of Ibadan in 1971. Papa's teaching career can be traced to his position at has the headmaster, St. Stephen's Catholic School, Asokere Odu, Nigeria, 1960. He also taught at St. Stephen's Catholic Secretary Modern School in Ado Odo, in Nigeria, 1960. St. Augustine's Catholic Primary School, Abe Okuta, between 1961 and 1962. St. Mark's Catholic Teacher Training College, Iperi Remo, 1962 to 1963. And Our Lady of Apostles Secondary School, Ijebu Odi, in 19. 66. He elevated from the position of lecturer to professor of history, University of Lagos. Papa has also, as at 1969, headed the Department of History. Between 1979 and 1982, he served as Dean, Faculty of Arts, 1983 to 1985, as the Director, Center for African Regional Integration and Border Studies. Papa's work is given expression to in books such as West African Transformations, Comparative Impacts of French and British Colonialism. This is a study that arises from the need for comparative historical analysis on the different styles of French and British colonialism and the localized impacts of the regimes in West Africa. Also, the Western Yoruba land under European rule, 1889 to 1945, which is a comparative analysis of the French and British colonialism. Other works include Boundaries and African Integration, Essays in Comparative History and Policy Analysis, 2003. He was the editor, Partitioned Africans, Ethnic Relations Across Africa's International Boundaries, and the editor as well for the Journal of History Society of Nigeria, 1982 to 1985. Baba is also a member of numerous academic bodies, some of which include the International Editorial Advisory Board for the Journal of African History, is a member of the International Board of Editors, Journal of Borderlands Studies, 
He has also had, held public positions in his capacity as a commissioner, National Boundary Commission, the presidency in Lagos, 1988 to 1994, the chairman, Ogun State Housing Corporation, Abe Okuta, 1976 to 1979, chairman, Board of Governors, Alamua Grammar School, Adodo, 1972 to 1975, Chairman, Endowment Fund Management Board, University of Lagos, 1995 to 1997. A member of the Governing Council, University of Lagos, 1996 to 2000. A member of the History Society of Nigeria, where he served as the Honorary Secretary between 1976 and 1978. The Association of African Historians, where he was Vice President, West Africa in 2001. And the Association of Borderland Studies. Well, as you can tell, Baba has done a lot of work when it comes to boundaries and boundary adjustments. So if we have people in here who have been relocated from their ancestral lands and moved into another area, I think you have Baba here, you can accost him as you please. <laughs> Papa is gifted with an inquiring mind, and Papa is well known for his thorough investigative and research skills. His ability to analyze and interpret information and an interest in human behavior, culture, and society is well documented. Papa is unique in his ability to make chronological connections between the past and present and use carefully crafted themes to emphasize these stories. He's a recipient of the first senior scholar program of international cooperative in Africa, Northwestern University, Evanston, Illinois, a Nigerian national honor holder of the order of the Federal Republic and a member of the Federal Republic. And Papa is also a Fulbright Fellow as well, 1979. With the plethora of history and alternative history, speaking to a variety of subject matters of our past that affect our present and not too distant future, and the affecting power relations, especially among the Yoruba, Papa's advocacy for reading wide and learning more about our history so as to strike a right balance between what is traditionally transmitted orally in the local courts and palaces and what obtains in official documents is clearly a methodology that will stimulate more informed debates and set quite a number of records straight as a result of the politicization of Yoruba oral history. Married to Victoria at Beke, Fatui, and blessed with children and grandchildren, Papa's interests include traveling and African folk music. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure, enthusiasm, an anticipation to learn that I introduce to this fortunate gathering our guest of honor and speaker at this edition of Yoruba Historical Conversations, Professor Emeritus Anthony Ijaola Ashiwaju. You're welcome.